Mm-mm-mm. Oh, no, you didn't, Peter Lynch. You did not just disindex funds. Mm-mm. No, sir. Nasty. Welcome back to Strong Man Personal Finance. My name is Christopher Bale. I'm a certified public accountant. I'm a long-term boglehead investor. That means I like index funds. I'm a author of the book, Stop Being a Broke Loser. And I'm not a fan of a recent quote or interview or whatever it was from Peter Lynch, one of the most legendary investors of all time. What did Peter Lynch do, ladies and gentlemen, that pissed me off? Legendary investor, Peter Lynch, breaks with Warren Buffett. Uh-oh, billionaire drama. Warning passive investors that they're losing out. Yeah, I haven't heard that story before. And backing the best fund managers to keep beating the market. Hmm. So this is Peter Lynch right here. Now, he is a very famous man, okay? He's an American investor, mutual fund manager, and philanthropist. As the manager of the Magellan Fund at Fidelity Investments, he averaged a 29.2% annual return, more than double the S&P 500. Now, that's a pretty good freaking return, okay? During his 13-year tenure, assets under management increased from $18 million to $14 billion. So, you can definitely see why he's an advocate of active investment. Because there are a few fund managers, you never know who they are. You, you can never guess who's actually going to beat the market consistently over many years. There are some fund managers that can, but it is extremely rare. As a matter of fact, it's almost impossible to beat the market in the long run. But Peter Lynch disagrees, and that's okay. Now, here's why I truly believe that Peter Lynch is wrong. Now, here we have an analysis at Forbes.com where they say they show from left to right the percentage of actively managed funds that have underperformed the target benchmark. So, for example, on this top line right here, Actively managed funds that compete with the S&P 500 have underperformed the S&P 500 70% of the time over a three-year period, 83% of the time over 10 years, and 94% of the time over 20 years. Now, if you look down the 20-year column and then you compare it to the indices that these active fund managers are trying to beat, 94% underperform, 88%, 88%, 90%. Wow, it's almost like in the long run, you may have star managers here or there, but over the long run, indexing wins, okay? Why? Because indexing is tax efficient, low fee, and it doesn't require you to time the market and act like a freaking clown. Because people's worst enemy is their own fear, emotions, and greed, and desire to get rich quick. With indexing, you, you buy the whole market, you buy the world market, whatever you want, you just let it ride, you don't touch it, you don't trade in out of stocks, you don't have capital gains or mini capital gains, and you pay almost no fees. That's what wins in the long run, okay? But Peter Lynch, since he beat the market 29.2%, and this was what, over 13 years? This was a long time ago, 30 years ago, even more. Now he thinks the best way for the average person is to just go ahead and, you know, hopefully pick a good fund manager and hopefully beat the freaking market, which I totally disagree with, okay? Now, I firmly believe the average person sucks at investing. They don't have the mental or emotional fortitude to buy good stocks and hold them for the long run. Look at my channel's comments. Oh, the stock went down, and it went down, so that's bad. And then a stock goes up that's overvalued. But you see, the stock went up, it's overvalued, so you should buy that one. People suck at investing, okay? The best way for you to succeed, I'm sorry to say this, is to buy a freaking index fund. Even I acknowledge that. 95% of my portfolio is in an index fund. So let's see what old Peter has to say. It's causing some drama. Mm -mm. Peter Lynch backs active funds over passive ones and expects top managers to beat the market. Yes, there's a very small percentage that beat the market. The problem is you just can't identify who they are. And if you're wrong, you get screwed. In contrast, Warren Buffett, my hero, recommends low-cost index funds as the best option for most investors. That is true. Low-cost index funds, total world index funds, and tax-advantaged accounts will have you sitting pretty well in retirement. Lynch posted a 29% return. Got it. So, legendary investor Peter Lynch bemoaned the rise of passive investing. Hmm. I wonder why. Active managers get compensated by trying to beat the market, okay? So if everybody just went ahead and bought the idea that indexing is uh, superior, 
the financial industry would lose lots and lots of money, okay? These managers are paid lots of money to try to pick winners and losers. They do that because they want to beat the market. But if you can't beat the market in the long run, their job's useless. It's it's not even worth doing. Why even pay these guys if they're going to fail and underperform? That's exactly why people like Peter Lynch are so against passive investing because it hurts his industry. Sure, he outperformed, but how do you freaking know if a manager is going to keep doing well? I mean, think about ARC. You know, oh, they did well for a year or two, but going forward, they may suck. We don't know. This move to passive is a mistake because it hurts the financial industry. People are missing the boat. Yeah, you're missing out. Oh, my God. If you just picked an active manager, you know, just luck of the draw, you might potentially beat the market. Maybe. Probably not. The retired investor told Bay blah, 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 blah. He compared this process of selecting a good fund to seeking out an orthopedist or heart surgeon in the top quartile of their profession. That is entirely wrong. There are many instances where a star fund manager will rise and beat the market. Everybody will fall in love with them. And their fund will become so large because there's so many capital inflows going into the fund that they fail to find new opportunities and ways to effectively use that cash. So what happens is a lot of successful fund managers, they tend to underperform going forward because they become victims of their own success. That's how it freaking works. So if you're looking back in time and you're like, well, this guy did good, so I want to invest with him, you're probably buying at the wrong freaking time. Our fund managers, our active guys, have beaten the... H out of the market for 10, 20, 30 years. Yeah, like less than 10%, and you don't know who they are. Highlighting the success of Will Danoff, whose Contra Fund made early bets on Google and La Tesla. <laughs> we'll see about Tesla. They'll keep doing it. Fidelity will continue to beat the market. Hmm. Warren Buffett, the famed stock picker, doesn't share Lynch's faith in active managers. Yes. Yes, Warren, yes. Instead, he recommends low cost index funds. Low cost, if I can highlight it, low cost index funds for the vast majority of investors as some active managers charge hefty management and performance fees and he doesn't believe they can, can, they can consistently beat the market. Wow, it's almost like he looked at this data and he saw that 90% of managers underperform their index over 20 years. I wonder what it's like over 30 years or perhaps 40 years or 50 years, which should be your time horizon if you're young enough and you start investing when you're young. Hmm. What Buffett famously went as far as wagering 1 million that an S&P 500 index fund over the course of a decade would outperform a basket of hedge funds after costs, big thing, cost, fees, and expenses. He won the bet. Indexing beat hedge funds. Hedge funds. Best traders. Hedge fund traders. That's right, because buying in and out of stocks is tax inefficient, and they charge high fees. Hmm. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so here's another thing I want to highlight. So here's Peter Lynch. He managed the Magellan Fund. So I went ahead and pulled up the Fidelity Management Fund. Man, Magellan Fund. The Management Fund. Let's look at a summary of this fund. Hmm. Been around since 1963, a large growth. Oh, expense ratio, hmm, 0.79. So basically almost 1% of your assets every year are being taken away in fees. Then we go and look at the turnover rate. The turnover rate tells you how often stocks are cycled in and out of the fund. The higher the turnover rate, the more stocks are cycled in and out, which generates higher capital gains, which you have to pay with taxes, okay? So high turnover, High taxes, or losses if the fund sucks, <laughs> and high expense ratio, which you pay no matter what, okay? You compare that to VT. Let's go compare this to the Vanguard Total World Stock Market Index Fund. Mm -hmm. Ooh, baby. Ooh, here it is. Ooh, ooh. God, hot. Hot. Ooh. What are the fees for VT? VTizzy. VTizzy my Izzy. Where's the freaking fees at? Why is this so hard to find? Here it is. 0.08%. Wow. We compare that to 0.79%. 0.08%. The Magellan Fund is 10 times as expensive. Okay. Let's go look back at the Magellan Fund. Hmm. Let's see what they're invested in. Now, here's where I freaking laughed. Information technology. Wow. Imagine that. Large cap tech has outperformed, therefore Fidelity Magellan has followed that performance and invested in large cap tech in the United States. Is that going to continue going forward? 
No, I don't freaking think so. So basically, they have Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Google, NVIDIA, United Health, Visa, and Home Depot. Wow, you get all those stocks in an index fund, but you don't get super hyper concentrated in them. Hmm. Wow, it's almost like this fund is just performance chasing. Interesting. Just buy tech stocks, bro. We're the Fidelity Magellan Fund. Here, give us 1% of your money every year. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. I mean, if this doesn't show you that Peter Lynch is wrong, I don't know what is. I mean, I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I, mean, I think he truly believes what he's saying, but the, what he doesn't understand is the average person is not going to pick the winning fund manager. No one really can, even if you're an accredited investor. How do you truly know a fund manager is going to outperform? What if the fund changes managers? That happens all the freaking time. You may have a good manager, and then they get traded out for a garbage manager, and now your fund sucks going forward. And the whole time you've paid higher taxes and higher fees. Or you could just match your tax advantage accounts by total world stock market index funds, like Warren Buffett says. Well, I think he says S&P 500. I disagree with that, but whatever. And you'll do better. That's my rant, ladies and gentlemen. Not a bad guy. I don't hate Peter Lynch, but I entirely disagree with him, and I support Warren Buffett. So that's that. Like, subscribe, tell your friends about me. Y'all have a wonderful day.